everybody! So in my first video I wanted to break down the vinyasa and the reason I wanted to break this one down to start off with, it's quite a strong piece to be starting to, side to start with, um, is because I think it teaches you lots of different things about the yoga practice. Um, I think it teaches you about core control, I think it teaches you about taking your time, but I also think it teaches you the most important lesson which is very much picking and choosing what you like doing the things that work for you, not doing the things that don't work for you, but also over time, just building the confidence to try and filter those things in, okay? Um, in this video, uh, you won't be needing a strap today, but I would recommend if you have it, picking up your yoga brick and potentially even two. I'm sitting on my second one down here, okay? Uh, these aren't necessary, so uh, do not worry if you don't have them, but if you do, that'd be a nice addition. All right, so to start. I'll just show you quickly what it is I'm talking about when I say the vinyasa, okay? So there are a few different options and you'll find that your teacher, depending on where you go or where they've trained, will teach it slightly differently, okay? And so long as you're not injuring yourself, there isn't a sort of a right and a wrong way, it's just a preferred way, okay? So I'm going to start off with what might some, peop see, some people might think of as the easiest vari variation of the vinyasa. But I actually think it's the most important variation of the vinyasa. I think it teaches you a lot of skills. Um, and technically, you can start to make it really quite challenging. So we're going to start with the first variation. So if you make your way in towards a downward facing dog, and then from your downward facing dog, we're going to roll our way forwards towards our plank. And what's important when you find your plank is it's not a sad plank where you're sinking the hips, but it's also not a plank where your bum is being pushed out behind you. So it's a sort of a balance between the two. So what you want to do is pull the belly button in and draw the pubic bone towards the chin. From here, you can drop the knees and untuck the toes. Now at this point, there's a lot of discussion in the community around whether you should bend the back or keep the back straight. So I'm going to teach you a few different variations. In the first variation, you lift the pelvis just a little bit, nothing too much and you lower the chest and chin down towards the mat. So as you can see, my pelvis is just slightly lifted. From here, you can lower the belly button down, squeeze the bum and draw in towards this position called a low cobra. But in your low cobra, try and avoid pushing up and towards the hands. That's gonna really start to hurt the lower back in the long term, okay? So if you spread the fingertips, my hands are drawing backwards. If they weren't on the mat, they would be pulling in towards this backwards direction. So as I squeeze my bum, my hands pull back slightly and my chest lengthens. And then I can exhale lower back down. You could slowly roll up, but my preference is to stay on the mat, pull your pubic bone towards the chin, and then start to lift yourself up so you bring the bum and the shoulders up at the same time back up and towards the tabletop. From here, you can tuck your toes under and downward facing dog. So that's the first variation. Let's take that in a bit more real time. Roll forward, high plank. Lower knees, untuck toes, pull tummy in no matter what you're doing to protect the spine. Pelvis lifts a little bit, nothing extreme, chest and chin lower. Slide the belly back onto the mat. Squeeze the bum, hands draw back as you lengthen the chest and lower back down. Pubic bone pulls to the chin, bum and shoulders lift at the same time back towards your tabletop, and then tuck toes under, downward facing dog. So that's the first variation. The second variation is very similar, but you come down with a flat spine. So I'll show you. We roll forward in towards our high plank again, pulling the tummy button in. You then lower knees and untuck toes. So from here, you can pull the pubic bone to the chin, that's just before, so it's not lifting, it's pulling in. You then have to draw forwards and down like a landing plane. You can decide to pause at elbow height if you want to build a bit of strength, or come straight down onto the belly. So there's no arch in my back here. From here, you can stick with your low cobra, or you can come into something called an upward facing dog. But before you do that, if you experience any lower pain in your lower back, stay with this low one, yeah? So in your upward facing dog, you push into the hand, squeeze the bum. And I don't know if you can see, but my knees are lifting away from the mat here. And as I do this, I pull my belly button in, being mindful to not curve the chest forward, being mindful not to shove the shoulders in towards the ears, 
and instead drive into the arms and lift up. Gentle bend in the elbows before tucking your toes under, downward facing dog. So again, let's take that in a bit more real time. Roll forward, high plank, pull belly button in. Knees drop down, untuck toes, pull pubic bone to chin. Hover forwards and down, either pause at elbow height or lower all the way. Either make your way into your low cobra, hands drawing backwards, or as you push in towards the mat, lift into an upward facing dog, squeezing the bum, avoiding dropping the neck back, keeping the length. And tuck toes, downward facing dog. So the last variation is a variation that people love taking, but it does build, require quite a bit of strength to have been built. So in this variation, we roll forward towards our plank, and we pause. Some people call this a hover, some people call this a chaturanga, it's the same thing, yeah? So in this, what you need to do before going anywhere is align your plank. So don't lift your bum up, don't sink your bum down. Align your plank, pull belly button in. I love giving this cue, it's quite a strong one. Bend your elbows to either side and wrap them back to the thighs. That fires up the abdomen before you've gone anywhere. You then come forward and down like a landing plane, seeing if you can hold at elbow height, but remember you don't have to, you could drop straight to the belly. Then lifting in towards a position called an upward facing dog, lifting knees and thighs away from the mat. And then you come back into your downward facing dog. I want to pause on that hover variation for a moment. The reason I want to pause is I see people really wanting to move into it, which I think is fantastic. I don't like the idea that there's one position for someone who's been doing yoga for ages and one position for another. Let's marry it all together, yeah? Yoga's meant to be fun. But I think what I do see happen is people get really excited about it and then one of two things happen. The first uh, thing I see happen, which is most common, is that people's arms quite, haven't quite built the strength to hover. So they bend the elbows a little bit, then they sort of give up, hip drop and head drops, and that's just causing strain. And then people can push in towards an upward facing dog, but often it results in the toes not being tucked under, yeah? The other variation I see is people have started to build this upper body strength, and they're feeling really confident and they're loving it, and they forget about what's happening in their bum and their core, yeah? This one's a slightly easier one to remedy. So what I see happening, I'll exaggerate, but what I see happening is people become so confident at swooping down their bum lifts, and then they find it quite hard to lift into an upward facing dog, so what you tend to see is they sort of have to lower, and they sort of think, oh, I can't quite shimmy out of that, and then they find an upward facing dog. To work out which one you are, which one you do, grab your bricks. Pop them on the medium setting, and of course it doesn't have to be bricks, it could be anything, yeah? One comes between your hand, one comes under your pelvis, and then as you pull forward and lower down, be really honest with yourself, which one hit the bricks first, your chest or your bum? If your bum hit the mat first, your pelvis hit the mat first, you're one of the individuals that sink the hips, and if your chest hit the mat first, you're a dolphin diver, yeah? So. How do we remedy that? How do we remedy that? Well, keep using your bricks as a sort of a litmus test to work out where you are. But what I would recommend is coming back to the second variation. So from your plank, you drop knees, untuck toes. You then bend the elbows and work on that hover, work on the hover, and always allow yourself to lower straight down towards the mat. You're building up the upper body strength, which is what you want before low cobra or pushing into the upward facing dog and then downward facing dog again. And then the other way that I like to do it, and this for me is my favorite way, and this is how I learned to do it, was I didn't worry too much about what it looked like. So I found my plank, and then when I started, I say to myself, okay, I can go one inch down and have complete control over my core and have control over my arms. But any further, I'm gonna get do that dolphin dive or drop the hips. So in which case, I've come that one inch down, and then I thud, collapse all the way. Don't worry about controlling it, yeah? Soft belly, soft mat, you'll be fine. And what you'll find is that the second week, you say to yourself, actually, I can come down two inches and feel strong. And then collapse. And then three inches, and then four inches, and then five inches, okay? And before you know it, you'll have built up the control. And the reason I suggest the collapse, to just release yourself, is that at least you're not building that habit of seesawing, yeah? And that's the habit we want to break. So I'll quickly show you those three options again. Maybe move with me. Don't worry if you don't manage them smoothly. Option one, let's roll forward, high plank. Pull tummy button in. 
Drop knees, untuck toes, lift pelvis just a tad, and lower chest and chin. Pelvis lowers, squeeze the bum, low cobra, hands are drawing backwards, chest lowers. Pull pubic bone to the chin, lift in towards your, up, uh, your tabletop, tucking toes, downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in and out. And then let's go for second variation. Roll forward, high plank. Lower knees, untuck toes, pull pubic bone to the chin, bend elbows. Either pause at elbow height if you're building your strength for your hover or lower straight to the belly. Make your way in towards your low cobra, stay here or if your back is feeling okay with it, squeeze the bum, open the chest rather than shrugging shoulders to ears. So open the chest. Tucking toes under, downward facing dog. Third and final variation. Remember guys, take your option with this. Remember what happened with your hips and your chest as you lowered onto those bricks. Roll forward, high plank. Pull forwards and lower, hover, pause. Pause, all collapse. The reason I said pause, pause, is I see people often swoop straight through it. Lifting into your upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. So I hope that slightly slower breakdown of your knees, chest, chin, that half hover and full hover helped. If you have any specific questions as to how you're working with them or different things that you're finding going on in your body, please do pop them in the comments. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, please do like and subscribe. And if you're on Instagram, again, please do like and follow me. And of course, share this with as many friends as you would like. Great, thank you so much.